I may never shoot this again. Or ever. Today we are shooting the solar eclipse. I've got the Canon 100 to 500 and we have a lot of people here. So we're just gonna document the whole process. As you can see, it's cloudy behind me. I don't know how this is gonna turn out. We kind of got fingers crossed that even if it is cloudy, we can get something. Now there are a few things that we can expect to happen. It will get darker, it will get colder, potentially windier, although we are on Lake Ontario in Coburg, Ontario of all places. It's not too busy. Hopefully we can get this shot. You're the only Fuji shooter among us right now. I'm the imposter. You're the imposter. <laughs> Do you want to show us what you're shooting on? Yes. Right. Today we have <laughs> the X-H2S right here set up with this beefy chungus right here. The, be the beefy chungus? <laughs> yes. The uh, what lens? The XF150 to 600. Oh, Times man. that by 1.5. What do all these buttons do? If I switch them, does that oh, like yeah. screw things up for you? No. No? Not really. You know what you're doing? Pretty much. Why the Fuji X-H2S? And you have the X-T4 as well, right? Yes. So why not the X-T4? What's the, what's the advantage there? The X-H2S is the newer model. So, so, so it's going to get you a slightly better, better sensor, ISO performance maybe? Pretty much. Yeah, something like it that. is a better ISO performance. I mean, I will say 600 millimeters on APS-C, that's like what? 1.5, that's 8, 900. 900. It might be too tight, but you've got the variable. You've got the variable on there, so you can always zoom out if you want to get more of that corona. If there is a corona. If there is, there will absolutely be a corona. Positive attitude only. See, you need to manifest things, right? You need to attract the energy. <laughs> no, <I'm> Excuse just... <laughs> me? I'm done. <laughs> Hey Will, what do you, uh, what's that? So this is my uh, solar protection for my camera. Um, it kind of, uh, kind of looks like you made it out of a, a cereal box. What's the, yeah, what's the story there? Pretty much, it's a piece of cardboard with some solar film in there. I ordered my filter on Amazon and the box was empty when I got it, so I kind of had to improvise. Is it, is it safe though? What does it say on it? It says, uh... It says it's solar safe. Whatever that means. It's got the, the ISO rating on there. Oh, ISO. That's like your camera ISO, right? Uh, yeah, same thing. Same thing? Sure. Comment below if you know. Is this, uh, is this solar film Mike Abramanian approved? Um, yeah, he, in his words, um, it's better than nothing, so... I trust him. I trust him. How do you feel about your chances of success? I think if we can actually get a break in the clouds, I will get something. I have, I think, the most zoomed-in lens here, unless you count well, Taha's 900 millimeter equivalent. Taha's that we just saw, he beats you by 100 millimeters. On, on the math side, on the cropping side, but you've got full frame, so sensitivity, ISO sensitivity may be better there, but I think we're all shooting like ISO 100, 200 max. I actually bought this lens for the Eclipse, so if we don't get anything, I'm gonna be a little upset. I definitely won the award for jankiest setup. I mean, it's interesting. We'll, we'll leave it at that. Oh, we gotta, is that? I thought we saw some sun for a bit. No, I got, I got, I got, I got, I got excited. I got excited. <laughs> oh my gosh, Rich, what is this? You've what? got, it's a two for one. It's like what? a pizza pizza special here. Yeah, no, I just got my main camera right here. Yeah. You know, and then this is just for the memes. <laughs> just, I had to. This, this is the little, what, what is it? It's like the, the First, Pentax. let's focus on the main thing. Okay, let's focus on the main thing. Okay, tell me about First, it. First, A7R5, 135. I'm going to crop like crazy, but I have like 100 megapixel, uh, uh, megabytes per photo, whatever it is. But Meg megabytes yeah, per photo? <laughs> well, I don't know. Uncompressed raw. I'm going to go big. Good just crop in. Good choice. Lee filter, 15 stop. Hmm. With clouds, even better. Don't okay. worry about it. I don't, you but probably, you probably don't even need that many stops no, at this point. Not. But but the memes. For the memes. Oh, then you hurt the Oh, I broke how the you, camera. How do you hit the camera? camera? How dare you? We have the Pentax Q7. <laughs> this thing with a 70 to 200 lens f4 it's got a 4.6 times crop so this is effectively like a 300 to 900 lens and we're just shooting totality with it there's no filter for this little thing so when we talk like full frame over here oh, yeah. versus like taha's aps-c over there this is like this is the ultimate this is a, camera. a cropped crop yeah basically this, you have the most crop that makes the it the most it means it's the most best yeah <laughs> The memes. <laughs> yeah, the question I want to know is how do you protect the such a small sensor? Do you need like a small ND filter or? If, well, if I had one, yeah, I would well, use an ND filter. Well, so Rich has to look down from here up, <laughs> up to the sky. That's his view in case you're wondering. But my last good point is I do have 
like a wireless transmitter. So mm. for my main camera, when I am screwing around with this, with the meme camera, you won't shake. I'm just gonna be touching. I'm just gonna be taking photos like this with this right now. Oh, cool. Know? So that's gonna be the easiest thing I think. There you go. There you go. Actually, speaking of which, I'm gonna show them my setup yeah. right now. Follow me to the Canon R5 setup. Here we have the 100 to 500. Look how much this thing zooms. It is absolutely massive. Now the advantage is if I wanted to zoom out a little bit and get a wider composition, I could, but I think 500 is pretty good. Shooting at F8, one over a thousand, maybe one over 500 on the Canon R5, of course, our favorite camera. So this is gonna be my photo setup. Now Taha right now is filming video on the R6 Mark II. Say hi, Taha. <laughs> Hello. That's gonna go on here, and I'm gonna set the GoPro up to do a time lapse. I've already got the, I don't really know about the settings. I know I don't have a solar filter for the GoPro, I just have a regular ND, but I'll probably just do that during totality to kind of show the environment. But other than that, it's pretty simple. You saw Rich had his little interval clicker remote shutter. I've also got one too. It's wireless, but I might end up doing it wired just cause like, I don't know, wireless stuff has a, chance of messing up, but I do have custom modes set up on my camera. So this is a tip, I got this last night. Mike, Astro Mike, who you met last year, if you remember the video, we've been talking back and forth about shooting solar stuff, and I've actually got custom modes set up on my R5. Mode one is like pre-totality, mode two is like during those interstitial phases where everything's switching over, and then phase three is like bracketing, like seven stops of bracketing for, uh, for the, the corona. Manfrotto tripod, KNF tripod. I'll probably put them both low to the ground for less wind and less shake. I thought it was getting brighter for a second. I feel like we're gonna get it. I'm optimistic. I mean, look at all these cameras here. Chris over there brought like five cameras. Should we go? Should we go check out what he's doing? Let's go check. Out. So Chris, mm -hmm. what is your uh, number one tip for shooting an eclipse? Um, shoot with multiple bodies. <laughs> Wait, how many do you have here? I have three bodies going, but there's a purpose behind that. I got two bodies I'm gonna shoot stills with. One, I'm just gonna kind of just go shoot on an interval and let it do its thing. Relatively slower shutter speed on that one, just because I've read you can get okay. some more interesting effects. Okay. Uh, and then I'm gonna be manning the R5 myself at a high shutter, oh, sorry, a high frame rate. Um, like a burst mode? Like, like super fast, yeah, like one, one eight thousandth of a second, like the fastest I can possibly okay, get Okay, so the it. max, pretty much every camera shoots at one over 8,000. Yes. So you get the two different sides of it because you can get very different images depending on the shutter speed that you shoot at. And the third one is gonna be for video. Okay. Um, which I'm also gonna shoot at 120 frames per second and hopefully that maybe we can get something that way as well. Maybe some like things like the exactly. aliens coming off of the sun. Exactly, yeah. Cause yeah. you know, they, they move really fast. Yeah. And yeah. if we if we if you're not shooting at 120 frames per second, you're then no. you're not gonna get them. They'll just appear like a blur and you won't get like the actual Martian. Yeah. Like, yeah we so. won't see Elon Musk streaking across no, the sky. No, no, no. So, yeah. okay. This way I'm covered to get all of that stuff. Cool. Hopefully. If we, uh, if we get it, I don't know, does it, does it look like it's... Uh, There's blue sky over there. There's, There's like a little patch. Right now we're communicating with all the other photographers. Mm -hmm. Like, what's it look like where you are? What's it look like where you And it's like, who knows? Fingers crossed. I'm waiting to see, like I'm waiting to watch the other people because it's happening in different places in the States right now. Yes. So like what they get. So Texas I heard was probably the one of the better okay. spots. Okay. But you know, we're Canadians. Okay. We Sydney's in down in Canada. Texas right now shooting it. So we'll cool. see, yeah. We'll see, well, we'll what see him yeah. in a bit, so yeah. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Both. <laughs> we uh, kind of don't have anything going on, so I th think we might try to, I don't know, like we've got the lake out here, and I've heard that when it gets dark, the horizon will light up. What are you thinking about uh, about drones? You think we should try it? I say we Did try. you bring yours? No, I did not, but no? we have to improvise, adapt, overcome. All right, well, let's, uh, we're gonna try a few things still. As I stood there waiting in the last few moments leading up to totality, I continued to believe and hope that the skies would clear up. With all the preparation our group had done to get the right lenses, the proper filters, to confirm all of our camera settings, and even practice in the days and weeks leading up to the solar eclipse, it felt impossible to not get the shot. I was so ready and prepared for it that I knew that even if I had a split second of clear skies, a brief moment in between the clouds to see through to the eclipse on the other side, that I could make it happen, that I could get my shot. As our group waited and watched the skies get darker, the feeling of defeat set in. 
our one chance to shoot a solar eclipse here at home in Ontario wasn't gonna happen. Should I bump my ISO? So we watched as the skies became darker and waited as the moon approached, casting its shadow onto the underside of the clouds. What do you think, man? Dude, it's really weird right now. I'm at ISO. This guy's talking settings. 3200? <laughs> birds think it's morning. Yeah, the birds just started chirping. Yeah. That's the angle there, look at that. Clouds. Just vlogging in the middle of a solar eclipse. Well, unfortunately, we did not get clear skies. But it's like the most unreal, like, fake sunset, I would say. To the north is, like, bright. And then to the south is completely dark. That was our minute, eh? <laughs> Just like that, I gotta go back to ISO 800. <laughs> Everybody's cheering, that's so funny. What did you do? Did you run <laughs> to get ran. something? Yeah, we got something. <laughs> did you? Yeah. Oh, you got one of the lighthouse. Yeah, I'm like, why not? See, improvise, adapt, overcome. Oh, that's not too bad. I'm dying. Millions of people across North America had a once in a lifetime chance to witness and photograph a total solar eclipse, but we missed it. Putting it that way sounds kind of harsh and feels somewhat unfair when you see all of the awesome photos that have been shared online. But in retrospect, we still experienced totality. We still had a photo adventure and we still made memories albeit in a bit of a different way. This photo adventure was one of those rare instances where we ended up walking away without any photos, but not completely empty-handed.